In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to create a halftone file very easily in Photoshop for DTF uh, transfers or printing. Let's begin. Here I have a file. Let's say this is your file and uh, you, you gave it to me. It's print ready pretty much. It's a PNG transparent. What I ended up doing was uh, creating a layer out of it and then um, adding a background layer to it which would be like the color of the shirt. So in this case, it's a black shirt, right? But this is the actual design here. Um, so my design is on one layer and then the black background is on another layer. What I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna create a duplicate layer by going to image and duplicate. So I'm duplicating the image. So now I have two of the same exact uh, files, but this is the one I'm gonna work on right now. This is my master file here, but this is the one I'm working on right now to get the half toning going. So you notice both files are RGB files, that's fine. Um, but I do have to convert this one to uh, CMYK. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to image, mode, CMYK. And then do not flatten, so don't flatten. Okay, so once I do that, now it's converted to CMYK, but this one's still RGB. Okay, so we're gonna be working on this one. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove cyan, magenta, and yellow from my design. And the way I'm gonna do that is I wanna make sure I'm working on the design layer, right? Which is this one. I don't wanna be working on the background. I wanna be working on design. So just make sure that your layer uh, reflects the design that you have. So you're choosing this one and that's the one you wanna work on. So now I'm gonna to go to uh, image and I'm gonna to go to adjustments and levels. Okay, now my levels palette opens and now I'm gonna remove cyan, magenta, and yellow. So the way to do this is by going to channels, clicking here, and go to cyan first. And cyan, you're gonna pull this lever all the way to the right, all right, until it shows 255 down here on the output levels. So now you see the image, it's missing cyan. That's good. Next, I wanna go and do the same thing to magenta. Again, pull the output levels, lever all the way to the right until it shows 255 here and then you can see the image it's already missing uh, magenta next i'm going to do the same thing to yellow but instead of pulling the lever i'm just going to go to enter the number 255 which is the same thing as if i pull the lever so you, you have the option to either pull the lever or enter the number 255 okay so now there's no more cyan magenta or yellow on my image now i'm going to go back to uh, i'm going to go to black and this one I want to keep, but what I want to do is see the black background of the shirt compared to the black of the design, it's way darker. So what I want to do is try to get as dark as possible all the dark parts of my design. And to do that, I'm going to go to this uh, lever and move it to the right. So let's see, here you go. So I think that looks pretty good right about there. And then what I want to do next is I want to lighten up some of the grays because once you have toned the grays, they tend to get a little darker. So what I want to do is this middle one here is for your midtones or for, for your grays. So you move it to the left, it's going to get lighter. You move it to the right, it's going to get darker. So right is darker and then left is lighter. So I want to move it to the left. It starts from 1.00, so I want to move it to the left. So I'm going to move it to just try to get it light enough for myself. Let me see. That's pretty good, I think, right there. So I'm satisfied with this. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error on your part, but once you get the hang of it, you're going to be able to do it quickly and eyeballing it. Um, so I'm going to do this, leave it like that, and I'm going to push OK. Next thing is going to be, uh, let me see. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to create uh, a white layer now on my, on my background. My background is black, so I'm going to make it white. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go to uh, Edit, Fill, and then I'm just gonna go to uh, white right here. So go to fill and go to okay. So now my black background turned white. Now I'm gonna go back to work on my shirt design layer again. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, go to my channels palette, which is right here, I have it open, your channels palette, and uh, you're gonna make a selection. And to do this, you have to click on control on your keyboard. So see that? See how my, my button, my pointer chain uh, gets like a little box around it? That's because I'm holding down control. So what you got, we want to do is you want to hold down control and then click on the black channel. So I'm going to hold down control right now and click on the black channel. And now that creates a selection 
around my design right here it's actually selecting all the black pixels only nothing else now what I want to do is I want to inverse the selection so I'm gonna to go to select and inverse so now it went backwards right and reverted whatever it wasn't selecting okay so now that's good right there now what I want to do is go back to my layers again and add a new layer by clicking on this little button here which is a layer button so you click it and it creates a whole new layer above your your layer where you're working on right now so this is an empty layer and what I want to do is I want to fill it in okay so now I'm gonna to go to uh, with my selection still selected, I'm going to go to edit and fill, okay? But now I want to go to a uh, foreground color, okay? Oh, but before I do that, let me get out of this. I want to make sure that my foreground color, which is right here, this, this black box is my foreground color and this white box is my background. So you could tell the foreground is above the, the white one. So I want to make sure that my foreground color is 100% black and by and to check that and to make sure it is, you have to click on it. So click on the little black box of the foreground and uh, you're gonna come right here, C, M, Y, K. See these values? These all have to be at 100. So let me click and enter it manually. 100 and then 100 and then 100 and then 100. So C, M, Y, K will all be at 100. I'll go to OK. So now I'm sure that the foreground color, which is the black color here, is gonna be all 100s on my CMYK. Now I could actually go over here and do the fill and then go to a content and I go to foreground color, which I'm telling you it's gonna fill it in with that same black and go to okay. So see, now you see my image got darker and you started seeing a little bit more details because of the darkness of the black. Next, what I wanna do is deselect it. So I'm gonna to go to select, deselect. So there, I have no more, no more selection. After that, what I want to do is I want to delete the design layer I was actually working on. So I'm going to go over here and delete this design layer. You know, just drag it and drop it into a little trash can. And that's it. So now I have my new layer that I created with the, with the CMYK black. After that, what I want to do is I want to go to image. I want to go to mode and I want to go to grayscale because I want to grayscale my whole image. Okay. And on this, you do want to flatten it. So flatten it. And then after that, once you do that, then you go back into image, go into mode, and now you're gonna go to bitmap, okay? Now bitmap, you wanna make sure that the resolution is at least 300 pixels, and you wanna make sure that the method you use is halftone because everything else is not gonna work. We wanna do halftone, so we're gonna select halftone, okay? Then you go to okay. Once you do that, these are my settings that I like to use. You can use whatever settings you like to use, but I do, uh, recommend that anything between 15 and 35 is good enough for DTF printing on frequency. So the lower the number, the bigger the dot, the higher the number, the smaller the dot. So to me, 27 works pretty good. So I leave it at 27 lines per inch. The angle could be anything you want. I like 45 because it's a, you know, it's a good angle number. And the shape, you can do whatever shape. You could do a round shape or a, a diamond dot, a ellipse dot, a square dot, any kind of dot shape you want. I like my dot to be round, so I'm gonna leave it at round. And then I'm gonna to go to okay. Now you look at the image, let me zoom in. It got half tone, see that? That's what a half tone looks like right there. Okay, blacks and whites, there's no grays. Okay, so once you do that, then the next thing you do is uh, you want to uh, select again your whole, your whole image. You want to select it, so go select, and then go to select all, so select all and it makes a, a square around your whole image. And then you wanna to go to edit and copy. Okay, so we just copied this whole image. Now I can close this image and I don't have to save it. Now I can go over here to my original artwork and make sure I'm working on the layer where the design is. And I'm just gonna to go to edit and paste. Okay, so by doing that, it copied the whole um, canvas size. So it pastes the image exactly where it's supposed to be. If I turn off this layer and turn it back on, you're gonna tell that the image is placed exactly right above the original artwork design, which is good, okay? Now, one of the other things we have to do before we do anything else is we have to go back to image. As we're working on the layer with the, that we just pasted, of course, we have to go back to image and then we have to go to um, adjustments and we have to go to threshold, okay? And the threshold, make sure it always has to be at 128. That's gonna give you a good balance between your whites and your blacks. As long as 128 is there for threshold, you're good to go. Click on okay. Once you do that, the last thing you gotta do is go back to your channels palette again, right here, 
and then again with the control you have to click on control on your keyboard hold it down and then click on rgb this time okay so you click it and now it makes a selection again selecting the black uh black and white pixels but now you, what you want to do is uh turn this layer off leave it there just turn it off with the eyeball right here so turn it off and now you can see your your layer below now you have to click on the layer below where your actual artwork is at and then what you want to do next is click on this which is the layer mask okay click on that it creates a little side layer next to your original layer right and that actually applied the selection that we just made to it so if I zoom in now you're gonna see all the little dots on my actual design now this design is completely half toned okay now let me show you how it looks uh, once you save it uh, what you gotta do now is to save it is you gotta remove all the layers and only keep that one layer that you're gonna use so this is the way your file should actually look like when you supply it to your print uh, printer or transfer service it's gonna be missing a lot of uh, a lot of stuff but it's gonna this is the way it's gonna look it's gonna have a bunch of dots and it's gonna be missing a lot of black okay now it looks funny right now it looks weird it looks like something's wrong with it but nothing's wrong with it this is the way it's gonna look and you can save it as a PNG or whatever file your your printer needs as long as you give it to them as a transparent file because right now we have a transparency okay now let me show you how it's gonna look when it's on a shirt okay so this is a shirt right here let's say this is already the the, the final print I got from you know I transfer I put it on transfer paper and everything so this is already that the actual DTF print so now when I put it on the shirt this is the way it's gonna look see that so the black of the shirt is filling in for the black that did not print but if I put the file outside of the shirt you still see that the file still looks kind of funny but once you put on the shirt that's the way it looks and that's this actually gives it a uh, halftone gives it a really soft feel because it's not completely printing everything in white you know white back background for all the colors it's only printing um, what it needs to instead of the black so that actually gives it a really nice soft feel compared to all that really tough plasticky feel that you normally feel on solid DTF prints and that's pretty much it that's the way your you, you create a uh, half tone for DTF and just save it as a PDF or PNG or whatever file your printer needs or you, you need to, to use to print um, leave any comments down there um, below if you like this tutorial and uh, let me know if you have any other ideas or any other requests I can help you with. Thank you.